Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. Before I proceed, I yield myself such time as I may consume Gentlemen, to quickly sir, nice respond to my friend, uh, Mr. McGovern. We're debating process here because that's what this is. This is a process resolution to impeach the President of the United States. You didn't accept a single amendment last night. You didn't confer with us when you did it. So that's why we're talking process. It's an un fair process. With that, I yield to my good friend and fellow member of the Rules Committee, distinguished lady from Arizona, Ms. Lesko. Two minutes, How much Madam time Speaker. Two, gentlelady is recognized for two minutes. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I thank Representative Cole for yielding. This impeachment process is a total sham. This resolution, which seeks to legitimize it, misleads the American public. Section 2 of this bill is titled The Open and Transparent Investigative Proceedings by the mm -hmm. Permanent Select Mark Scott, you're reporting on the impeachment of Donald Trump. Donald J. Trump, the, this is uh, apparently live. It's live. I just cut into it for a second. But the uh, House Democrats and Republicans are on the floor right now battling it out as we speak to impeach the President of the United States. I don't know when we'll get a vote. Uh, I'm not sure, but uh, you can almost guarantee the votes are already in. The Democrats, uh, I, I would imagine that some Democrats that are in areas where Trump uh, won, for example, uh, in my district, Matt, Max Rose, you remember the guy that I chased down the street with <laughs> asking him about health care for all? He's He represents mostly Staten Island and a little sliver of Brooklyn, and he, uh, Staten Island voted heavily for Trump, a Republican area, but uh, they voted uh, Democrat uh, in for Congress. So if, for example, if Max Rose votes to impeach Trump, he might just have a problem when he goes back to Staten Island to explain to his constituents that voted for Trump, why did you, if we, if we voted for Trump, why are you voting to impeach Trump? Uh, so that, that might be a problem, but uh, for the most part, the Democrats' uh, majority rules in the House, and let's take a look at what's going on here. Uh, oh, but first, let's look at the breaking news, breaking news. Bernie Sanders holds secret campaign meeting with 15,000 working-class Democratic donors. You heard? Oh, shit. What is going on? Bernie Sanders doing clandestine, clandestine gatherings. Detroit releasing bombshell evidence in the form of hundreds of cell phone videos taken during the gathering. Numerous anonymous tipsters confirmed this week that Bernie Sanders recently attended a secret campaign meeting with 15,000 working class donors from the Democratic Party. Quote, this damaging photo footage shows Senator Cl uh, Sanders clandestinely mingling with thousands of representatives from the nursing, food service, and public education sectors many of whom were, were apparently chauffeured to the event aboard city buses and enjoying fountain drinks upon their arrival, said political strategist August Buckminster, adding that the event, which re reportedly took place at a local vocational uh, school, uh, could, provide, could, be, could prove pro problematic for the presidential candidate in his bid for the Democratic nomination. Quote, Sanders can be heard promising a highly underprivileged audience everything from a minimum wage increase to health access, health care access to educational opportunities, whatever it takes to get them on his side. <laughs> Damn, Bernie, you're just selling out to the people. Bernie Sanders selling out to the people. In one video, he explicitly offers a group of steelworkers a quid pro quo of affordable housing in exchange for their vote. Ah, oh, for shame. Afford affordable housing? A living wage? What are you, crazy? Come on, man. That's free stuff. So uh, in, if the senator wants to win uh, the backing of the National Party, he will certainly have to answer for hobnobbing with his room full of people at absolutely the lowest levels of power. Of course. At press time, Sanders had received further criticism after documents were uncovered showing he has acted on behalf of a constituent of approximately six, 625,000 Vermont residents over a period of 30 years. Wow, for shame, Bernie Sanders. For shame, representing the people, going to the people. What happened to the donors? You're supposed to go to the donors, man. So while waiting for this... Um, 
other news to break. Let's see if these jacks, jack offs are still talking. I urge my colleagues to oppose this resolution, and gentlemen, I yield back gentlemen, the balance of my time. Gentlemen, ladies, time's expired. Gentlemen from Massachusetts. Madam Speaker. Whatever, so he's Massachusetts, he's a Democrat, he'll be for the impeachment. A distinguished member of the Rules Committee, Ms. Shalala. Gentlelady's recognized for one minute. Madam Speaker, having been through this before, I know how painful impeachment investigations can be. I also know that I'm not alone in saying that supporting this continuing inquiry is not a decision that any of us makes lightly. None of us has ever hoped to consider investigating our own president for compromising our national security and obstructing justice. Regardless of political ideology, we... To, it's, a, it's insane to hear Democrats talk about obstruction of justice and, uh, and election integrity when their primaries are rigged. They admit it in open court. But, but Trump investigating, right, that's, not the, that's not the issue. Trump is investigating Joe Biden because they were doing shenanigans in, the, uh, in Ukraine. Uh, it involved, you know, Joe Biden doing the shenanigans, right? So, so this, this election, I, 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 it's, it's a waste of time to watch it, right? But let's, let's continue. So House Speaker Nancy Pelosi proposal to vote on formalizing procedures for the impeachment inquiry into President Donald Trump has splintered members of their own caucus. I just talked about that a little, a little bit. This is Breitbart reporting. But what, is, uh, what the vote is on, right? The vote is on process. That's all the vote is on, <clears throat> to, to have a vote in the House of Representatives to see if there will be a transparent impeachment process rather than running around behind closed doors like Adam Schiff wants it to be and Nancy Pelosi wants it to be, to have a vote, to have a transparent inquiry into impeachment. Now, that's not, un, it's not unfair, but when you base it on what, if you, when you view, view that in terms of what it's actually based on, which is a, a recorded conversation or a, a, uh, a conversation written down by people listening between uh, Volensky, the president of the Ukraine, and Donald Trump. When you view it in that light and what was said that Trump, that, that lightheartedly said, can you look into this for us, is, I mean, it's ridiculous. When you look at how many crimes and how many misdemeanors the Democrats and Republicans combined have have uh, have uh, engaged in, you know the, the the Hillary Clinton you know debacle. She was under two FBI investigations, running for president of the United States, and nobody cared. But Bern, but but when it comes to Trump, so it it's just a disgrace. I mean, it, the bottom line is that the that the Democrats will get what they want. They're going to get their uh, they're going to get their vote because they're actually the Republicans want that and the American people want that. They want a transparent process to see what the hell is going on behind closed doors, and it gives Trump due process. Um, yeah, it gives Trump due process. What else does it give Trump? It, you know, it gives the whole process due process. It's out in the open, right? So what else is going on with these fuckers? Oh, look, it's Schiff. Affairs Committee have engaged in an intensive inquiry. Let's go back a little bit. None. Select Committee on Intelligence, Mr. Schiff. Gentlemen, is recognized Schiff. for two minutes. Madam Speaker, I rise in strong support of House Resolution 660. I rise in strong support, but I do not take any pleasure in the events that have made this process necessary. I rise in strong support of the resolution, but I do so with an understanding that the task before us is a solemn one. How each member of this chamber approaches the vote this morning and the days and weeks ahead may be the most important service as members of Congress we will ever pay to the country and constitution that we all love and have pledged to defend. For the past several weeks, the Intelligence Committee, the Oversight Committee, and the Foreign Affairs Committee have engaged in an intensive investigation. That work, which has been conducted with equal opportunities for both parties to question witnesses, has added a great deal to our understanding of the President's conduct as evident in the July 25 call record and the events that both preceded and followed that call. That work has necessarily... Blah, 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 ...without the benefit of the investigation that the Justice Department declined to undertake. 
Despite attempts to obstruct, we have interviewed numerous witnesses. We have provided important testimony about the efforts to secure. I think this idiot gets five minutes, but we're not going to listen to the whole five minutes. Testimony about the efforts to secure political favors from Ukraine. We have reviewed text messages among key players, which show how securing political investigations was placed at the forefront of our foreign policy towards Ukraine. This resolution sets the stage for the next phase of our investigation, one in which the American people will have the opportunity to hear from the witnesses firsthand. We will continue to conduct this inter inquiry with the seriousness of purpose that our task deserves, because it is our duty, and because no one is above the law. Madam Speaker, I urge passage of the resolution, and I yield back. Gentlemen, yields. All right, so there's Adam Schiff. Here's a, this is a good one. You want to watch this? Let's watch this one together. This is uh, Debbie Wasserman Schultz. You can get away with not telling the truth. This guy fucking grills, right? He's being grilled by Debbie Wasserman Schultz, and he flips it on. It's just an entertaining uh, piece to watch. While the Democrats right now are in Congress lying their asses off, let's look at the great liar, Debbie Wasserman Schultz. Still in power, still Congresswoman of Florida. GIS has actually bragged about systematically restricting legal immigration. Um, and I think it's important for us all to be clear about what you have been aiming to accomplish. My constituents, Americans across the country, aren't fooled by this administration's... You're not, your constituents are not Americans across the country. They're a small branch. You're a congresswoman in Florida, you cunt specious attempts to distinguish between documented and undocumented immigration. You and Mr. Trump don't want anyone who looks or talks differently than Caucasian Americans to be allowed into this country. That's false. I'm sorry. Please don't interrupt me. And I'd like the time to add That's it back. That's defamatory. Excuse me. It's, there's nothing defamatory about it. And the the, time the general lady controls the time and the witness will get a chance to respond. Thank you very much. You just a just a trigger. This is this will trigger the shit out of you. You want to block all immigration and make life harder for immigrants, and you have demonstrated that you will pursue this heinous white supremacist ideology at all costs, even if it means making critically ill children your collateral. He just called them heinous and a white supremacist, heinous white supremacist policy on immigration. That's what you just said to the. What is he? He's the uh, acting United States Citizens and in Immigration Services Director, Ken Kuchenalala. Collateral damage in the process. And this goes to a comprehensive pattern of harm at USCIS under your leadership. In August, you announced the administration's new public charge rule, for example, which would deny legal status to immigrants who use social services. Mr. Cuginelli, has USCIS done any analysis of how many children may stop receiving critical services due to fear of le losing legal status under this rule? And I'd like you to answer that question, please. After declaring that I am not a white supremacist, as uh, you alluded, you have, in, you have <clears throat> had white nor is the policy. president. Okay. Um, and uh, facts the, matter. Yes, they do. Yes, right. they do. Truth. Which is why matters. I'm stating them here. Today. Yes. No. What? What? Certainly or not. You're, Please you're answer the question. How many children? Certainly cloaked in legislative privilege. How many privilege, children but that may stop means you can get away reclaiming with not my time? The truth. How hey, do you hear what he said? You're cloaked in legislative privilege that al allows you to get away with not telling the truth. That was dynamite. Watch this. Getting them here. Today. Yes. No. Please answer the question. Choke again. Hold on a second. Certainly or not. You're, Please you're answer the question. How many children? Certainly cloaked in legislative How many privilege, children but that may stop means you can get away reclaiming with not my time? The truth. How many children may stop receiving critical services due to fear of losing legal status under this rule? Yanking you're social services. You're asking about public charge. That's right. I don't have that information in front of me. Does anyone behind you have the information? We came to talk about deferred action today. Um, I'm able to ask any question I'd like in your jurisdiction. That's so, fine, but I came yeah, I, you have prepared a to accommodate the head, what this Mr. subcommittee Cuchinelli, you wants. are reclaiming my time. You are the head of USCIS, and you're going to tell me that you <clears throat> made a, established a policy on, public, uh, on the public charge rule, and you don't know how many children off the top of your head it affected? Did you not think it through before you insisted that that, that rule's was a policy? thousand pages long, ma'am. It's a pretty, so, you know, when you're talking about affecting children, one would think that someone in your position... In watching this, I think everybody agrees that immigration, the, prob the, the, the subject of immigration in this country should be legal immigration. If people can 
legally immigrate to this country, we don't have a problem. But while they're sitting here waiting, there shouldn't be an incentive to get free benefits, uh, benefits that actually most Americans don't even get. Free medical, food stamps, you know, well, not food stamps. I think you can, they can get food stamps. I think they have to, there's a five-year waiting period, but uh, certainly medical. They can get cash assistance sometimes, one-shot deals, paid rent, and all of these other, all of these other uh, uh, programs. I don't think anybody disagrees in America that Americans should be put in front of the line for these sorts of social services, but uh, not Debbie Wasserman Schultz. If you put anybody in the country who happens to be white in front of the line, then you are a white supremacist and a racist. Position, if you were going to establish such a heinous policy with such far and significant reach and potentially... Why, why, why should she expect any respect from this guy whatsoever when she's insulting him, right? That's the way she's speaking to him, cunt. Harm thousands of children that you would know how many children it would affect. You don't so know? The, the, what you refer to as heinous policy is a 1996 law Okay, I'm not asking you for commentary on the policy. On, uh, wildly bipartisan basis. Okay. But you have implemented a policy that yanks social services and, and denies the ability denies of children nothing. legal status to, to immigrate here if they are going to use social services. In fact, uh, advocates have reported that immigrant families are terrified and that some have already dropped their children from essential programs like Medicaid and temporary assistance for needy families. When you announced this rule, you were asked whether it was consistent with the poem under the Statue of Liberty, which reads, quote, give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses, yearning to breathe three, free. And in response, you said the poem was only referring to people coming from Europe. And people coming from Europe would not be a public charge. Do you think our immigrants... I did not say that. that. That is what you said. That is not what I you said. You think, uh, well, this certainly was the implication. No, no, no. It's that, what you would like to broadcast. No, no. I, I, I absolutely... Heard you, I heard you say it. I heard you defend it. And <clears> I want to know whether you think our immigration policies should treat immigrants from Europe differently from other immigrants from other parts of the world. And is no. the purpose of... You don't think so? Correct. Well, so then... I'm not sure why you made that statement because well, it I didn't. made it seem you, like you, you, you did. Appended you said the your poem. Own, your own piece. No, no, no. To the end you of said it. the poem was only referring to people coming from Europe. She's such a fucking liar, and she's caught in the lie, and he's holding her to it. There's no doubt about that. You added and, to the end of the and the, the statement. implication was that people from Europe would not likely to be a public charge. Is no, this a, it was not. Were you attempting to shut down the American dream for immigrants who may not be rich or white with this policy? No. Okay, Obviously. we're the wealthiest country on earth. Surely we can live up to the spirit of Lady Liberty and open our arms to immigrant families who just want to make a better life for their children and not yank the rug out from under them as you have with this heinous public charge policy and the intimidation tactics that you've used to make sure that people understand that they're not welcome here if they're brown or if they need help. That's Thank you. False. I yield back the balance of my time. That is utterly it's, false. It is not false. The lady is not the back. The with, time is not yours. With the, the law uh, back to the, Thank you. I yield back the balance the of my time. Back and the witness time. does not the have the floor. Bang. That was, that was good. That was fucking intense conversation. Huh? Hillary, that's like Hillary Clinton. It's back. Right? Gentlemen from fucking Oklahoma. Nasty ass team. Uh, thank you, madam. Let me just give it a little fresh. See what our democracy to keep Ugh. our country united. The times have found each and every one of us in this room and in our country to pay attention to how we protect and defend the Constitution of the United States. Honoring the vision of our founders who declared independence from a monarch and established a country contrary to that principle. Honoring the men and women in uniform who fight for our flag and for our freedom and for our democracy. And honoring the aspirations of our children so that no president, whoever he or she may be in the future, could decide that Article 2 Okay, says, Marcus Conti reporting. We're waiting for, the, um, waiting for the big vote in Congress. Congress is going to vote today at some point on the uh, resolution to f move forward transparently <laughs> with the impeachment process of Donald J. Trump, the President of the United States, because he had a phone conversation with, or he had a yeah, phone conversation with the president of Ukraine about corruption. So we'll wait. Hurry up and wait. Mark Sconti reporting. 